Welcome back to Nucleotide Metabolism on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss how we actually biosynthesize adenylate, or AMP, and guanylate, or GMP. And in the previous video, we saw the enzymatic process by which we convert ribose 5-phosphate into IMP, which in some ways you could consider the parent purine nucleotide, because this IMP, although it's not incorporated into DNA or mRNA, it is used to create both AMP and GMP. And that's what we're going to look at here. We're going to see that IMP can be diverged between two different pathways, each of which is a two-step process, and you can get AMP and GMP respectively. Let's start with the one on the left to get AMP. So IMP can react with an enzyme called adenylosuccinate synthetase, and that's going to give this molecule, which I don't have labeled, called adenylosuccinate. You'll notice that this enzyme is going to use the activating power actually of GTP, uh, we'll talk about why that is in the next video. So you see now here we essentially have this aspartate attached, but the molecule is called adenylosuccinate. And again, we have GTP net hydrolysis to GDP and inorganic phosphate. Now, this adenylosuccinate is then going to be consumed by adenylosuccinate lyase. Um, this should actually have two C's in it. Let me go ahead and fix that. But in any case, adenylosuccinate lyase is actually the identical enzyme to what we saw as the third to last enzyme in IMP biosynthesis. Recall that some texts will actually call this SICAR lyase because its substrate here is SICAR, but most of the common texts actually refer to it as adenylosuccinate lyase. And that's the same enzyme that we have here. And it pretty much does the same type of reaction. It has, uh, once we attach an aspartate onto something, it leaves at least the carbon region off of this as fumarate, which will then go into the TCA cycle, or Krebs cycle, and that's going to leave us with this adenine, adenine nitrogenous base, and the whole nucleotide is just adenylate, or AMP, adenosine monophosphate, and that's how we get AMP. Now let's look at the right-hand side and see how we get GMP. So IMP is going to react, in this case, with an enzyme called IMP dehydrogenase. What this enzyme is going to do is it's going to take this corner, this uh, carbon right here of the six-membered ring, and it's going to put a carbonyl right there. So notice we're going to have to use NAD and water to do that, and we get out NADH. And that gives us this carbonyl right here, and this nucleotide is called XMP. Turns out the actual nitrogenous base is called xanthine. So put a ribose with that, it's called xanthosine. So this whole thing is xanthosine monophosphate, XMP. Now the XMP right here doesn't really do anything else. Um, so it's really just a part of this pathway, an intermediate. So it's going to be, get consumed immediately by GMP synthetase, which first of all hydrolyzes the nitrogen off of the R group of glutamine and attaches that to this carbon right here where we originally had this carbonyl. You see now that we have a nitrogen right here in NH2, shift base formation, and so that's going to require ATP hydrolysis to ADP and phosphate. And the glutamine being hydrolyzed is going to be left with glutamate. But ultimately the major thing that we're concerned about here is that's going to give us guanylate or GMP or guanosine monophosphate. And so that was the purpose of generating IMP in the previous video. It's because we're going to divert it between two separate pathways here so we can get AMP and GMP respectively. Now, one thing I also want to mention is that both of these enzymes right here, adenylosuccinate synthetase and IMP dehydrogenase, these are both allosteric enzymes. Uh, so we had uh, a couple of allosteric enzymes in the IMP synthesis, that is PRPP synthetase and PRPP glutamine amidotransferase. Both of these are allosteric, which makes sense because these are two control points going into IMP synthesis, so it makes sense to regulate at the beginning of the pathway. But once we get IMP, these two uh, enzymes are going to be allosteric to regulate the balance of AMP and GMP. So one of the things that you're going to find as we start going into nucleotide biosynthesis for both purines and pyrimidines is if we compare, let's say, the two purines, the two primary ones, AMP and GMP, or really just A's and G's. Okay, uh, the body is going to want to balance those as much as possible. So it's going to want to balance the purine A with the purine G. Okay, if the levels of G start to rise up too much, then you need to stop making G and make more A. Okay, 
Likewise, if you are making too much A, then you need to stop making as much A and make more G. And so this is going to be a way that uh, we're going to be able to do that. So it turns out that AMP, if it starts to build up in the cell that's doing this, it can actually feed back and allosterically inhibit adenylosuccinate synthetase. That's important because if you've got too much AMP, you don't need to make any more. So if you have too much AMP and it starts to feed back and inhibit this enzyme, then the IMP will instead go towards the other side to make more GMP to balance it out. Okay? And the reverse is also true. Let's consider a case now where I have lots of GMP. So I don't need to make any more Gs. Okay? So it turns out that GMP can actually feed back and allosterically inhibit IMP dehydrogenase. That makes sense because if, you're already got, if you already have too many Gs, you already have enough of those, you don't need to make any more. So GMP will feed back and inhibit its own synthesis. And that will give a chance for the IMP to be, to be diverted towards the left to make more AMP. And so again, it's all about balance. All right? Now there's another uh, sort of a means of regulation here. Um, it really just has to do with the logic of these two uh, different pathways right here. Um, remember that AMP can be processed to ATP, right? You just, it gets phosphorylated twice, you get ATP. GMP likewise can be phosphorylated twice to make GTP, okay? I don't think that's a fairly difficult concept. It's pretty simple, okay? So AMP can be made to, into ATP, GMP can be made into GTP. Well, it makes sense, actually, if you think about it, that the product of this, GTP, is used as a substrate in the synthesis of AMP. Notice that GTP is actually the phosphate source in adenylosuccinate synthetase. Likewise, in GMP synthesis, ATP over here on the right is a substrate in uh, GMP synthesis, at least in GMP synthetase. Okay, now they're in different. This one's in step one. This one's in step two. But you need a GTP to make AMP, and you need an ATP to make GMP. So this is another way also of providing some balance as well. So if I have plenty of A's floating around, it's presumed I have both AMP and ATP. So the AMP, as we said, will inhibit its own synthesis, but the ATP that would form from this is actually going to be used in GMP synthetase to make more GMP. And that's another way of also balancing it. You're using the ATP to actually make more GMP. And the reverse is also true. If I've got plenty of Gs floating around the cell, it would be presumed that I have both GMP and GTP. And so notice over here, GTP is used by adenylosuccinate synthetase in the synthesis of AMP. So the GMP will inhibit its own synthesis, but then the GTP that's formed can actually help form more AMP. Okay, so this is just a really nice way of balancing the two purines. Okay, now hopefully this makes sense, both the synthesis and the regulation. We're going to look at in the next video a more um, overview of all of the regulatory points, and we're going to see um, all the allosteric regulation of the entirety of purine biosynthesis. But hopefully this makes sense. So please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.